So every single week, without fail, I always turn the aircon on when I get into the studio, and I always forget about the aircon when I come to record, and then I always have to add noise reduction over this section because it's just loud whirring in the background. However guys, <laughs> this week I actually remembered. So I'm the Mike James and welcome back to another studio vlog of my experiences for working for Catnip Illustrations. So without further ado guys, let's just get into the video. This week has been another great week, although a very busy week, and I wanted to actually invite you guys at first to see the biggest order I have ever packaged at Catnip, and this is it. Everything in this order totaled to around like over, well over £300, and it was the biggest order I have ever had to package in Catnip, and it actually took me a total of about an hour. Uh, to package and gather all of this stuff just because of how much there actually was uh, And then I had to like individually package everything in in cellos and wrap everything up And I actually put this in a big second-hand box that we had lying around But Catherine believed that it wasn't uh, professional enough So I actually had to unpack it and put it in a series of small boxes And then we put all the smaller boxes in a bag and unfortunately I didn't show that process But I wanted to just share the process of just making up all of the products that went into this order because I just felt like it was going to be super just super interesting to see what it's like to just do a huge order and it's interesting for me as well to look back at it and look at you know what I did and what I could have done better so it's a it's an opportunity not just for you guys to see what my life is like working for catnip but it's also an opportunity for me to understand where I can improve and that's why I'm showing you this So, it's actually been such a busy week at Catnip. We literally ran out of everything. We ran out of uh, thank you cards, which are a huge thing for our orders. Uh, we ran out of Halloween tissue paper before the end of October, which was our sort of projected time to run out and then go into Christmas wrapping. Uh, I ran out of stickers. I just ran out of so much. And in fact, in a minute, you can see me printing all of the thank you labels because our go-to thing if we run out of thank you cards is because we offer a 10% discount with each order uh, for when you order next time. We it, There, you can see me printing like 50 plus uh, stickers to put onto postcards. Uh, just so that people can get the code and just you know just so they know that we are actually Super thankful for their support. That's the most important part is we really do want people to to feel Appreciated with the support that they're giving us uh, because they are essentially giving us all a, a you you guys are essentially giving us all a job uh, And it's so great that you guys are supporting us and we love you so much for it And that's why we put so much care and attention into packaging everything because we just want to put a smile on everybody's face.
So this week, I don't necessarily have like a full topic that I wanted to talk about over this video. There was a question which came up, which I really wanted to answer though, which I thought was really interesting. And that was what it was like working with family and, you know, just the process of working with family. Now, it has changed a lot and there's been a lot of hiccups along the way. And I'm going to share them all with you, but I think it's just important, uh, first and foremost, to say that um, you've got to find the the right balance of uh you know sharing you know if you're going to work with family or you're going to hire a family member i think there's probably some people out there that have different approaches to this but i think initially you've got to it's it see it's different for for every person because i feel like you've got to look past the the family bond and you've actually got to just treat people like you would any other worker Otherwise, if you do hire a stranger that works for you, then you don't end up with favoritism and everybody gets treated equally. And I think that's really important is that everybody gets treated equally. So it's really difficult to to really talk about, you know, what it like the whole process. Like I cannot tell you what it's like to hire somebody, but I will tell you what it's like to work for some other family member and work alongside family members and some tips and things that helped me just in case anybody's in a, a similar position where they've got family helping them out or they want to get family involved. Uh, then hopefully there's a few things that might you know that you might be able to pick up on but before i do that i just wanted to point out uh that uh this is the end of day one and we had so many orders and on day two uh, i actually came in and i actually think it was day three i don't think i got that much uh, footage of day two um but there were so many messages to answer i think there was like 15 messages and that's like the most messages that i've ever had in a morning Um, yeah, this is the most messages I've ever had, ever. <laughs> So anyway, I digress. I want to get back onto the subject of talking about family and working for family because it was very different in the beginning. Catherine used to work in a separate office uh, space and the only time she ever came through was if she needed something or she wanted to just come and check on me or if she actually wanted to, uh, you know, if she got an email or a message saying that something was wrong with an order and she just wanted me to come and fix it, then she would come and tell me or she would come and tell me what it is I needed to improve. So it was very different in the beginning because I actually felt quite emotionally attached to uh, just wanting to please Catherine. I just wanted to do a good job for her and I am the type of person that is a perfectionist. So every time that i made a mistake in catnip at the very beginning i took it extremely personally and just as a side note i really hope you you really like the christmas wrapping paper because i absolutely love it and it gives me such a christmasy vibe it's so great like i am the type of person that's going to start listening to christmas music on the first of november in fact today is the first when i'm narrating this so i'm actually gonna go and listen to christmas music in a bit <laughs> um so yeah, it was very different in the beginning. Catherine actually, um, I used to take things really personally if I ever screwed up. Uh, and to be honest, I did think it helped a little bit. It helped me make sure that I didn't make that mistake again. Uh, and I still make mistakes to this day, but I think what's changed since we moved into the new office space is learning to detach uh, your emotions from business, especially uh, with family involved. And what I, what I mean is I don't get into work and that I turn into a emotionless robot. Like, <laughs> that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is that you tell yourself that everything that's been said is not a dig at your personal uh, persons. It's a professional constructive criticism so detaching yourself personally and thinking this is strictly business really helps uh, when you are in that sort of position where you've got family working together because if Catherine comes to me and says Mike I don't want you doing that that's that's not good the customer has complained then I know that that's not Catherine making a personal dig at me I know that that is Catherine trying to run the best business and she's telling me what to do or how to improve 
so that the business can have an overall better appeal on the outside. And I am totally in support of that. Being a business owner myself, I totally understand and appreciate that position of needing to do what's best for the business. And that's why I tend to not take things uh, too personally when I've made a mistake anymore. Of course, it still hurts. I'm not saying that I'm a Vulcan and I've completely been devoid of emotion or I've managed to overcome it. It still hurts, but the way that I deal with it is I kind of say, right, okay, I've made a mistake, let's correct the mistake and let's try to make sure the mistake doesn't happen again and I offer a sincere apology and if I feel like it's unjust, which doesn't really happen, but if I feel like it's an unjust comment, then I will try and justify my position by sort of saying, well, I did I did think I was doing it for this reason. And then Catherine will sometimes say, well, that's not what we want. And then I'll say, okay, that's fine. And then I'll change. And then I'll let go and I won't linger on it. And it's really hard to try and, you know, give any advice that will help people achieve the same, especially if you're going to be working with family. But honestly... Working with family has been the best experience uh, and the best part of working for Catnip. Like, we we are, we are have a sort of work hard, play hard kind of environment. Like, I we will work really, really hard, but then towards the end of the day, you know, we'll have a bit of a laugh, we'll listen to a good podcast or a good audio book or something, and we'll have a laugh and we'll, you know, we'll just have a, a reminiscing moment and sometimes we'll go for, like, a meal and we'll reminisce this or the you know how far we've come or you know the the plans that we've got for the future not just for catnip but for each of us individually and to be honest it's been great as well working with my older brother And that's simply just because growing up, I've got two brothers, one younger and, and Dean. And growing up, unfortunately, I've always been in a position where I've been closer to my younger brother. And uh, Dean's always been, a, you know, that, that older brother that's been a few years older than me. And he's always had, a, like, different friends. And he's always, uh, you know, worked really hard. So I haven't got to spend much time with him. But now I find that my interests outside of work actually align more with my older brother than they do my younger brother. My younger brother's still very much into gaming. My older brother's into, you know, traveling and, and food and lifestyle. And I find myself in a very similar boat. So other than that, guys, you know, working for Catnip has been great. This week has been so so busy we're heading into november now and this is like the peak month for christmas orders and christmas products coming out so this month is gonna be absolutely crazy i cannot thank you guys enough for all of the support you have given me right now i'm really really trying to uh, push to see if we can hit 5k subs uh, by the end of the year i don't know if we'll be able to but it would be great if we could either way I am so thankful to each and every one of you that have spent every single minute watching these videos. I cannot thank you enough. And if you guys have any questions or you guys want me to talk about any particular subject in the future, please leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm always happy to take suggestions and improvements on board. Otherwise, guys, I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. Uh, and I wish you all the best for the week ahead. And I hope you all go forward and make amazing things. And I wish you all the best uh, for your future business endeavors.